Hey guys, Pete here with Jaya Solutions. Today I'm going to show you how to make a soils map using QGIS. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is get the soils data. And the best way to get that is to open up a web browser and search for FAO soil map. Your first result should be this link right here. Food and Agriculture Organization Soil Map of the World. I will leave a link in the description down below just in case you have any issues with that. So let's click on to the link. And we should, it should take you right here to the data hub. So this is the soil map of the world. We have the legend and the data is either worldwide North America, South America, etc. Now in my example, I'll use the whole world and I will just query on a particular country at random. But if you don't want to do that, you would just click on to report to access the, uh, the shapefile format. So let's go ahead and select this link here for the worldwide data set. Okay, so there's going to be, it's going to provide some information here. There's going to be some PDFs of the different uh, regions of the world, all the different continents here. And if you go all, almost all the way down, it's really kind of hard to define, but it says right here, is source data of digital soil map of the world. And you can expand this little box here by clicking on the word more. When you do that, now you can see that there is the shapefile format. And that's what I want. So a little hidden, but it's, it's there. So I'm going to click on download. Okay, so in my downloads folder, I'll go ahead and extract it. And I'll also open up QGIS. Okay, so in QGIS, I'll go and add the shape file. So to do that, I come up to the top toolbar under layer, add layer, add vector layer. And the source data, I'm going to click on those three dots there. And I'll go down to my downloads folder and open up that extracted folder. Now I'm looking for the, uh, the file type SHP, the shape file. It's right here. We'll go and open that and we click on add and close. So we have the shape file for worldwide soil data. Okay, and if we look at the attribute table, I'm just right clicking onto the file there and click open attribute table. Here you see there's some columns here and this is the soil type. And over here we have some area, but we also have the country. So we could query or select out a particular country you wanna do your analysis on. Okay, but before we do that, we notice that there is this little question mark here. It says layer has no coordinate reference system set. We will set that once we find out what country we want to uh, select out. Um, if you want to do the whole world, basically what you need to do is right click on to the file and uh, export save feature as. When you select uh, a destination, the CRS right here. This is where you change it. But we'll go, we'll do this one more time. So let's go ahead and do, let's say Australia. Okay. So I'm going to select out just Australia. I'll go back to the attribute table. I'm going to click on this tool right here select features using an expression. Okay, this window opens up. 
And what I want to do is say right here, country equals Australia. So I come right down here where it says fields and values, expand that out. I want country, so I double click. That equals, and I like to say all unique, or you get a sample just to make sure you're not misspelling something. It's just a little easier to just to kind of grab what you're looking for by adding that. Of course, if it's a bigger data set, it might be a little convoluted, but anyway, so let's go and uh, select on, or excuse me, double click on Australia. There we go. And we select features from that. We close. So here you can see that there's 2,951 features that were selected. Okay, so we could show selected features and sure enough, all my Australia. Data sources are selected. I could close out of this table. Yes, it's all selected here. So we're going back to that coordinate reference system not being set. So we'll fix that right here. So I'm going to right click onto that shape file. We're going to create a new one. In doing so, we'll set the coordinate reference system. So we want to export save selected features as, so just the selected. Okay. And we will put it in my file project folder. And I'll say Australia soil data. Save that. Right here, this is where we want to set our reference system, WGS84. And I want to add the new file to my Q, uh, QGIS project. So I'm going to say OK. We don't need this file anymore. Remove the layer. That's kind of interesting. This is not set. Let's go into it. Properties. I might have goofed something up here. Let's go to source. Do that again. WGS84. Apply. Okay. Not sure what happened, but uh, let's double check here. Yeah, we're good now. Okay, very good. So let's go ahead and symbolize this. So again, I'm going to right click. We'll go to properties this time and symbology. And by default, it is going to be at single symbol. We want to change that to, in my case, uh, categorized based on the value of um, the soil, um, the soil type. Okay, so we could do is classify. We have all of our values here. Okay, it looks like there's one. Um, all others, I'm just going to get rid of that because if it's no data, I kind of don't want to show it. So I'm just going to highlight just that row and click delete. You may or may not have that in your in your area of interest. I could go with these colors or I could change them. Um, right now the round co random colors. If I click this down arrow, I can select another color gradient such as like reds or greens. But I want to go to create new color ramp. And I'm going to select catalog, CPT, city. I did a video not too long ago where we went over how to install color ramps. I have over a thousand color ramps here. I'll leave a link in the description down below on, a, on that video. Um, I'm going to select, I'm gonna select topography and I'll select, yeah, I'll select that one. I'll click OK and click Apply and OK. OK, so starting to get there. And going back to my attribute table, so again, what we did is filter by Australia, and these are our soil types here. And say we want to take this to the next step, we want to create a map. We can come up here to Project, select New Print Layout. Let's give it a title. 
Oops. Australia soil map. And a new window will open up. Okay, so we could right click and go to page properties and we could change the size. So by default, it looks like it was A4. I'm just gonna say letter, landscape, just for this example. That looks good. And let's add that map to this. So we come up here to the top where it says add item, add map. I'm just gonna left click on my mouse, hold that down and just select out the whole extent there. And I can use this tool here, move item content to maybe center it perhaps. Um, there's also some tools here where you could change the extent of it. You could also uh, use the roller on your mouse to kind of zoom in, zoom out. Um, yeah, this looks fine. See, I just want this. We can now add a legend and that tool is right here, add legend. And I'll just kind of draw a little rectangle where I kind of want my legend. Now it's all going to be in one column here. So to kind of clean this up, we could just right click on the selected item. And actually what it might do is go over to this map here and click the lock button. So I'm not really messing with the accidentally maybe changing the, the zoom or, or something on my map here. So that's locked in. But I do want to make sure that my legend is selected because I want to um, adjust it a little bit. So I, again, I right click and select item properties. I could give the legend a title, but I'm not going to do that at this point. Um, auto update. Let's go ahead and we'll come back to that. Let's go down here to columns and say, let's say eight. See what that looks like. And we want to split the layers. Okay, so that's looking a little better. I could bring that down here. Let's kind of extend that out a little bit. It's not gonna be perfect, but um, yeah, so we have all of our different symbols here for the different soils. Now say we don't want that um, the layer name right here. So while this is still selected, let's go up in this area here and select unselect auto update and let's expand out my one and only layer. And what we want to do is select the top here, right click and click on hidden and it kind of it just got rid of that title to my layer and just kind of brought everything together a little better yeah so that looks good and we can always add a title up here title of the map australia soil map let's do something like that We change the appearance, maybe the color, how it's justified. Okay, let's change the size here. And we could go, say, bold, change the size to maybe, I don't know, let's see what 24 looks like. We could bring this out a little bit, maybe center everything. Again, you can spend a lot, a lot of time, you know, just really tinkering with this, trying to make it look nice. But I just want to show you guys just a quick example here, how to complete the look of this, this map here. We can add a nice little scale bar here, 500 kilometers. And if you desire, you can always throw a little north arrow map, north arrow to the map. Anyway, so you guys get the point. I'll just remove that because it looks a little hideous. 
Anyway, so I hope you guys found this useful. Um, by all means, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I encourage you to click the subscribe button because I do put out videos pretty frequently and I do appreciate the support. And as always, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.